Hello, this is Gary Marr from Linnell Community College. This screen capture was done for my JavaScript CIS 166AA class, and it's a short mini lecture on arrays. Um, this particular example I'm going to show you guys is one that I was going to cover in class and didn't get a chance to. I'm going to start with showing you what the output looks like, then I'm going to peel it back and look at the HTML and also the JavaScript. This is the actual application here. So if I click on Show Sales by Quarter, I get a nice display there in the box, et cetera, et cetera. There is some CSS associated with this, but I'm not going to cover that as part of the lecture today. I can let you guys look at that on your own. Let me go off into the actual files I used for this application. There were actually some stuff I took out of an earlier book, so I guess I shouldn't take credit for them, but I think they pretty accurately show you what you can get with arrays in JavaScript and at least an example of how you might use something like that. Now, I should start by saying arrays is a, a very elegant way of handling a situation where you have multiple variables that are holding similar information. Um, think of like a, a bookshelf, and I have, um, let's say, five shelves on that book. I could actually take and store information each shelf, and I could call the whole item a bookshelf. And then what I would do is I would then again classify every shelf in the book with a number or a subscript, or what's also called an index. That index would start with zero. And the last one would be the very last shelf in my bookcase. This works a lot like um, house numbers on a street. If I was to tell you to go find a house on Camelback, that may be a little daunting. But if I said 5725 Camelback, that street address will let you locate one of the businesses on Camelback. So think of this array as a big, long street. And then each uh, address on the street can be referenced by its subscript or index. And it, with that subject index information, I can either store something there or I can retrieve it. Now, this is going to sound an awfully lot like a variable, and it is. But the deal is, is because all these variables have a kind of a similar, a similar um, uh, design, name, purpose, it's very conducive in terms of looping through an array to find and then maybe even modify these values more so than it would be to set up individual variables. Maybe the last thing I could do is say that I could create an array of all the students of GCC. I would call the array GCC students and the X would go from 0 to 23,000 plus. If I didn't have an array, I would have to have a variable name for every one of those students. Needless to say, it would make the program very long and very daunting. So here's my external file used in this little example I just showed you. At the top, I've got uh, four variables defined, each of which, which have a name, and then they have this square bracket notation with commas. Each one of these happens to be an array. This is the zero element, the one, the, the two, the three. It has four elements overall, but the subscripts are zero, one, two, and three. This is pretty this is pretty common with all arrays, no matter what language we're learning. They start with an address of zero, and then they continue the very last element. So I've basically got five rows here. This happens to be um, five single-dimension arrays, but I can also, with arrays, and I'm not going to work on them with this class, actually have two-dimensional arrays where I can actually reference each one of these values by its row and column. That's not what's happening here. All right, so if I go down here, um, this particular example happens to be written in, in jQuery. The reason I can tell that is this var dollar sign is clearly symptomatic of something written in jQuery. Now, none of these lines up top here are executable as they stand. They're all just loaded in memory. The actual start of the program is down here. The onload uh, event, which happens whenever you have a uh, web page that's loading, when it finishes, it looks for whatever function is defendified by the onload. And here's the function. It's a series of calls. Each one of these is setting up an event on a button that exists in that application. And if I was to go back to the application again, I would see that there's a button here for um, sales by quarter, by region, and then um, by quarter, by region, by sales, total sales. And that's basically what I have up here, total, um, by region, and then also by quarter. So what happens here is those events are set up. It puts the focus on the show region button. And then based on when I click in one of these items, as you can see, it makes extensive. Every one of these examples has extensive use of for loops. One of the nice things about arrays is they're easily processed using a loop. It could be a while loop, but typically it's a for loop. The reason it's usually a for loop is because arrays are determinant uh, loops. In other words, they have a set stop point. Unlike indeterminate loops, which typically show up as while loops, which could depend on whatever value I key in. So what I would do is just kind of look at the syntax here and understand that the brackets are used to reference a particular index or value inside the array. 
it's going to start off with a value of zero and then it's going to increment all right and as long as that uh, incremental value is less than four so again zero one two three there is no four value of a subscript for this array and if I did have a four in my code I would get a runtime error now uh, I'm going to leave that uh, this particular example as it is and what I recommend I'm not going to talk any more about it now what I'd recommend you do is open up uh, Chrome or Firefox or one of your your favorite browser and then open up also either Firebug or the Chrome or um, any one of the tools that will let you walk through the script and then just took and put a watch point at the beginning of this uh, function here and just watch and see how it moves through the values of the array and then displays them to the screen all right I'm gonna leave that there for now um, over here is I guess I've showed you this right over here is the actual index file both of these files are really small and you'll see the CSS files used to facilitate that blue box around the outside if you have any questions bring them to class good luck